two fantastic portable projectors. Android TVs packed Nebula Capsule 3 Laser against the Samsung Freestyle running Tizen OS. Which is the better one and how do they differ from each other? Let's inspect! Hey everybody! Really nice to meet you, I'm Michael. We inspect a lot of cool and fresh tech over here and today we're on the hunt to find out which is the best portable projector. Obviously we're gonna stay in the niche of high-end portable projectors which are covering a lot of features, delivering really good quality. This is the rather controversial Samsung Freestyle which has had some very positive but also some very negative reviews. And this here is the Nebula Capsule 3 laser, something that I have thoroughly inspected a few weeks ago and we found out it's actually a very decent performing portable projector. But which of these is the better one? Let me disclose that we're gonna have a few rounds and I'll leave most of the picture-related comments for the end of the battle so that you can make up your mind what to expect based on the multiple samples you're about to see beforehand. Let me begin with the technology used. Both are DLP-based projectors, which is the standard for such devices these days. However, there's a big difference in the light source. Samsung Freestyle counts on a regular LED with a lifespan of up to 20,000 hours, while Nebula Capsule is bringing in a laser light source with 30,000 hours lifespan. Good to highlight that it is among the first portable projectors offering this technology. Both have 8-bit color processing. In terms of light intensity, the Rosso seems to be a bit of advantage on the Nebula Capsule side, since Samsung don't really announce the ANSI lumen value, which should be around 230 in reality. So, looks like in terms of specifications, Nebula Capsule is ahead and it already leads in terms of score. One to nil. Next, I'd like to talk about portability and design. Maybe this is the most subjective among the categories, because everyone may have personal take on how a portable projector should look like. A Coca-Cola can-shaped nebula capsule has always won the community sympathies. It is compact, nice looking, a little futuristic and at the same time easy to move around. While the optics is well covered by an external layer of glass and it falls under the outer borders, adding a protective cap could have been a good idea. Something that the freestyle projector has. It even has a feature of a lamp. Yeah, I know, kind of weird, because projectors do have limited lifespan, but even if you run this so-called lamp 24-7, it has to be on for more than two years in order to actually fail. Samsung have integrated a lot of interesting ideas with this projector's design and there's the freedom of up to 180 degree movement in order to point towards the surface. No matter ceiling or walls, you will easily project your footage or media. Something that Nebula Capsule can also do if you have a good tripod, which is an extra accessory. So a little more stable, in my opinion nicer looking, easily adjustable, Samsung wins and the score is now even. For the third round, we would like to explore what's on the inside. It's quite easy to find this information about the Capsule 3 Laser, an MT9691 chipset by MediaTek with a quad-core CPU, 2GB DDR3 RAM and 16GB flash storage. Dolby Digital Plus support, an inbuilt 14,500mAh battery and weight of 900 grams. That's quite alright for multimedia, but from the distance of time I would say a faster system on a chip would have been even nicer. Samsung don't really disclose most of their specs with the freestyle, not sure whether they use different hardware in the different batches, but you will notice pretty smooth overall experience in menu scrolling, the ability to control a lot of projector features and also to connect with a bunch of peripherals thanks to the wireless technology supported. Since I couldn't find a reliable source about the actual hardware inside Freestyle, I'm gonna stay away from picking a winner here. Still, it totally is not cool to keep customers in the dark about the actual computing power of a device that costs nearly $900. So now we switch to the software side. I'll try to be as objective as possible, but we shouldn't forget that people have biases. So if you prefer Tizen OS or Android TV, that would be an easy choice. Everything good and bad we can say about Android TV 11 is here. Most of the time it's smooth, 
functional, somewhat customizable and oriented towards consuming content. Play Store is a thing and the thousands of apps you can get access to is the real deal. Inside the menus you're gonna see a lot of configuration settings about keystone correction, focus adjustment, color modes, brightness. Nebula also add their own market app which surprisingly enables installation of Netflix. And yeah, it works, but know that it's the mobile version and you're gonna need either a real mouse or the Nebula Collect smartphone app. It can work, but it's not as nice as the version for Android TV. There are zero Netflix-related complications on the Samsung Freestyle side. It works alongside with the various other streaming services you can take advantage of. Samsung have location-based analysis and it came with all the popular streaming apps for my region. Likely the list is going to look different if you open this from the United States or India, for instance. My personal feeling is that Tizen OS works snappier, I do like the alignment of the menus a lot more and uh, feel free to disagree, but it aesthetically is the nicer interface. In the end of the day, although somewhat laggy, the greater choice for apps and more customizations leans towards Android TV, therefore another win for the Capsule 3 laser. The next round is about the sound. It's gonna be fairly easy because just listen to the sample carefully. I prefer the sound coming from the Nebula device, it also is the louder one. Based on the specs, with its 8 watt power and Dolby Audio, it's the winner as well. So sound is better with the Capsule 3 laser, but I wouldn't recommend any of these for awesome movie experience as a standalone solution. We carry on with yet another audible test, the fan noise. Nebula's cooler is quieter and almost never noticeable. Unfortunately, when you put the Samsung Freestyle projector under serious load, the noise gets intrusive. Autofocus and keystone corrections to be tested now. Take a closer look at how quickly these devices react. I feel that in this round, it's the Freestyle projector by Samsung that has the edge. Reacts quicker, doesn't go through calibration and basically offers seamless keystone correction and autofocus experience. I do realize that once you position a projector, it will barely move, but since these devices are portable, this great responsiveness might come handy at some point. So, image quality. Yeah, there are a bunch of aspects, and here, besides the specs, there's a whole lot more, mostly related to the color science experience we are being offered. Side by side, in terms of colors, Samsung is Samsung, pleasing to the eye, and especially when watching HDR content, the blue looks so much nicer. No matter what I was trying on the Nebula Capsule 3, I couldn't replicate this color tone. But notice the shadows and the blacks, they are unusually bright and the dark areas do not appear as dark as they should be. Might be related to specific tuning, which is meant to compensate for the weaker ANSI lumen index. Anchor Nebula's device, on the other hand, has a lot better contrast and despite the same resolution, the picture looks sharper and nicer and you can further enhance it depending on the scene. Samsung advertised their automatic adjustment depending on the projected surface color, but I can't say I'm quite impressed with what I see. My take here, better contrast, better sharpness, greater brightness and denser image in daytime. To me, Nebula Capsule 3 Laser deserves to win here, although the Samsung device has more natural colors and greater amount of picture tuning options. Last round, which could be the decisive factor for some of you, 799 versus 899. $100 do not sound like a big enough difference, but at this price, Samsung Freestyle is practically a non-portable projector, because you need to pay a few hundred extra dollars in order to buy the special battery case. Obviously, in terms of price, it's another win for the Anker's Nebula device. In the end, you want to hear a cliché? I can think of good reasons to buy 
any of those, because both of them can be really excellent choices for a portable projector. For instance, the Freestyle, um, the way it is designed and this adjustable angle, I really like it. Also, the fact that it runs Tizen OS, which is really polished, very well working, much more responsive than Android TV, another good reason. Also, the white color seems to be more appealing, but the price is ridiculous. Really expensive, and you don't even get the battery with it, because the battery is being sold as an accessory and it costs a few extra hundred dollars more. On top of the 900 dollars, the Samsung asks you to pay for the Freestyle. So if you get it discounted down to 500, it would make good sense, but more than that, it's a rather ripoff. The other contender is, in my opinion, the best you can get right now in terms of portable Android TV based projector. Laser back technology, a lot of improvements in terms of overall performance and very good illumination at a slightly larger body as compared to the previous generations, but still maintains its leading position in the market of portable projectors. Or why would you choose the Freestyle <laughs> over the Nebula Capsule 3, if at all? Can you think of some good reasons? Let me know. My personal bias leans towards the Capsule 3 and I think all these rounds that we have just go through are a good proof why I would make such a decision. Still, would be interesting to hear which of both would you prefer, why, and let's carry on the conversation in the comments below the video. As usual, more information about the products, ways to order them, and some ways to support the channel are listed in the video description area. Thank you very much for watching this episode. I'm Michael, and can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye!